What's going on guys? Before we dive into this video, this was pulled directly from my iOS interview mastery course. So if you are prepping for an interview, this is a must watch and this course is a must have. And if you want to dive deeper into data structures and algorithms, we also have a full course on that, which has real world breakdowns of the most important concepts you'll actually get asked in interview. So it's just a deeper dive into data structures and algorithms. And you guys can access these courses as a one-time purchase for lifetime access, or you can become a member with us to access both of those courses and all of our other pro courses that we have on the website. And if you guys want access to the source code for this video and all other videos that we post on our YouTube channel here, for a one-time fee of 59 bucks, you guys can get lifetime access to the source code for all of the YouTube tutorials. That includes our app clones, our Swift UI tutorials, Swift concurrency tutorials, Swift fundamentals tutorials, and our data structure and algorithm stuff, as well as our interview prep stuff. So if you guys wanna skip this typing and save time and be able to reference source code for all of our YouTube projects, past, present, and future, make sure you check this out as well. The links for all of this stuff is in the description, guys. So let's go ahead and get back to the video now. In this video, we are going to be diving into linked lists. So before we do any linked list problems, we are going to do a overview and sort of introduction as to what a linked list is. So let's go ahead and dive in now. So a linked list is a data structure used to store a sequence of elements. It's similar to arrays, but unlike arrays, linked lists do not use contiguous memory locations. So instead, each element or node stores its value and a reference or pointer to the next node in the sequence. So here is a visual representation of that, guys. So the first node in the list is what's known as the head. And as we can see here, each node value has some sort of data and a pointer to the next node. So if I want to get to say node C, I have to start at A, then go to B, then go to C. The difference with an array is that I could just simply access C directly. So a linked list is similar to an array, like I said, in that it is a collection of elements, but it does differ from an array in that manner. So once again, each node has a pointer to the next node. So to, tra to traverse this linked list, I would have to go from A to B, B to C, C to D, D to null, right? So now that we have sort of a visual representation of that, let's keep going with the key characteristics of a linked list. So dynamic sizing, it can grow or shrink dynamically without memory reallocation. So that's one of the benefits of linked list over arrays. And we'll get, we'll dive deeper into that as we go through these linked list problems. So we have more efficient insertions and deletions as well. Unlike arrays, inserting or deleting elements does not require shifting elements. So Guys, if I want to insert something, say at the beginning of an array, like let's say we have an array of one, two, three, and I wanna insert zero at the beginning. Well, that's a pretty expensive operation because I have to add zero here and my data structure has to shift every element over to the right by one. So for very large data structures, insertion is a very expensive operation. With linked lists, it's a very cheap operation uh, because of the way that the structure works. So we do have slower access time, however. As we saw, we don't get to access any element at any time. We have to traverse the linked list from the head node to get to a particular node. So we have slower uh, access time with linked lists. So Next up, guys, we can take a look at some real world examples of linked lists. So something like a music playlist where each song is a node and each node points to the next song in the playlist. So technically, if you're like on Spotify or something and you have a bunch of songs queued up, unless you can view like a list of that queue, you have to go through each individual song to get to the next one, right? So you, can't, you have to hit next uh, repeatedly until you get to the song that you want. That is an example of a linked list. Um, another one is browser history. So each web page visited is a node with a reference to the previous and next page, right? So in your browser, guys, if you only had those forward and backward arrows and you didn't have an access, access to a list of your history, that would be similar to a linked list as well because you can only go forward and backward one thing at a time, right? Um, another one is undo and redo in text editors. So 
each edit is stored in a node, forming a linked structure for undo redo operations. So for example, if I said like, blah, 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 and I wanted to undo those things, it's sort of stored in a linked list where I have to undo them one at a time, right? So now that we've done sort of an overview of what a linked list is, some key characteristics, some real world examples, I want us to go and implement our linked list class right now. So we're gonna call this a list node. This is how it's defined in lead code, guys. And we're just gonna go through and build out this class based on the information that we have at hand. So what do we know about a linked list? Well, as I said before, each node has some value and a pointer to the next node and every node in a linked list is of that same type. So each node is a list node, right? So A will have a value and a pointer to the next node B, which is also a list node. So to define that, one, we need to use a class and I'll explain why in a second, but we're essentially gonna have a var called value, which is just some integer. We're gonna be working with uh, integer-based linked lists, guys. And here's the, the tricky part. So we're gonna have a next value and that is going to be an optional list node. So this is the reason this needs to be a class, guys. Let's go ahead and make an initializer here. There you go. Um, let's see what would happen if we made this a struct. Because structs don't have reference semantics, we cannot have a uh, stored property that recursively contains that thing. So this needs to be a class so that we can use those reference-based semantics here and such that each list node can have a reference to another list node, which is of that same type. So uh, we're gonna write a couple different initializer, initializers here. Um, and this is literally just grabbing this directly from lead code. Um, I just want us to have a clear understanding of this class and how we're going to be using it when we actually start solving linked list problems. So guys, we're gonna have a blank initializer and this is just going to init self.val to zero and self.next to nil. And then we have this value initializer and then we have an initializer where we can pass in a value and a next node, just like this. So these are our three optional inits. Um, you know, if we just do a blank init, it will give us a zero based node where there is no next value. We can also initialize it with a value or we could pass in both input parameters here to initialize this class with a value and a next node. So now that we have our class defined guys, let's go ahead and see if we can take this array and build a linked list out of it. So essentially, it would look something like this. Zero points to one, which points to two, which points to three, right? So let's go ahead and build that out. We could just say let node zero equal a blank list node. Let node one equal a list node with a value of one. And we could just go ahead and copy and paste this and say node two, node three and go node two, node three. So we have four nodes, right? But we, now we need to connect them. So I'm going to say node zero dot next is equal to node one. Node one dot next is equal to node two. Node three, or sorry, two don't, dot next is equal to node three. And node three's next value will be nil. So zero points to one, one points to two, two points to three. That's our list node, right? And to wrap this video up, what I want us to do is see if we can write a function that will traverse through our list. So this would be the equivalent of essentially just looping through an array. But now I want us to see if we can start, um, you know, at the head of our list and uh, iterate through it all the way until we get to the end. So let's go ahead and write a function here to traverse our list. Traverse linked list, head, which is some list node. And it's just gonna print out the node, uh, the values at each point. So what we're gonna do guys, is we're gonna create a pointer. And 
essentially, if this is our list here, what we're going to do is sort of create like a, a, an iterator, like the same way we used pointer techniques in an array where we, cr we create like a left and a right pointer. We're going to be doing that same thing with a list. So we're going to start the, uh, the pointer at the head and just iterate through as we go. So I'm going to create a pointer and it's going to be equal to the head of the list. And then I'm going to say while pointer is not equal to nil, I'm going to print pointer dot value. And I'm going to say pointer is equal to pointer dot next. So essentially guys, this is how we iterate through the list. So it's going to pointer is going to start. At, oh, we need to uh, make this optional guys. That's my bad. And this needs to be optional and optional. And the reason we need to make that optional is because we know that the only way we know we're at the end of the list is if this pointer eventually equals nil. So we're going to keep iterating uh, by going next, 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 next. Let's see. Let me get the image back up. So we start here and pointer is now equal to the head, which is node A. And then it's going to say print out that value, which would be A or in our case zero. And then it's going to say pointer is equal to pointer dot next. Well, dot next is equal to B. So now pointer is here. It does the same thing, then goes to C, does the same thing, goes to D, does the same thing. But then pointer eventually becomes null, right? And that's how we know that we need to stop our loop and the function will finish. So guys, let's go ahead and say traverse linked list and we're going to pass in node zero as the head and run that and see what we get. I believe we're actually going to have to run it here. Let's see. Yeah, so zero, one, two, three, we successfully traversed through our entire list and eventually pointer became equal to nil. So that's basically going to wrap it up for our linked list overview, guys. We are and once again, guys, this video was taken directly from our iOS interview mastery course. So if you like this and you're prepping for an interview and want more practice with things like system design, more on data structures and algorithms, take home interview examples, core concepts in iOS development, make sure you check this course out. And we also have another awesome course that does a much deeper dive into data structures and algorithms in Swift. And guys, these are all of the techniques that I use to land a job at Meta and pass interviews at other companies like Google and Uber. So it's the real deal. Make sure you guys check that stuff out. The links are in the description. And for access, you guys can purchase these as a one-time purchase to get lifetime access to all future updates or you can become a member with us for just 42 bucks a month, which is less than a coffee a day. And that will give you unlimited access to all of our pro courses, email support, you can cancel anytime, and make sure you guys go ahead and check that out. So thanks for watching this one, we'll see you later, peace.